it's a shame that the so-called biggest artists in Nigeria, that the poor people actually love the most, they cannot even afford to experience them. A lot of Nigerians cannot even experience petrol. Mm -hmm. They told us if they remove subsidy, we will not have scarcity again. They said they remove subsidy. This, this scarcity is the worst one I've experienced wow. in the last maybe 10 years. Yeah. Our internet is the most expensive per capita. Our cement, top expensive in the world. There's a spiritual attachment to people and that which is theirs. I wish a lot of people knew this. Welcome to another edition of Zero Conditions Podcast. I'm looking mindful, I'm looking demure, I'm looking cutesy. I don't know why AOT2 did that, but I'm going to come back to you and your earring. <laughs> but it's cool. We are back. Tolan is in the building. He finally came back. AOT2 came through came with back. his... Wherever you went to. AOT2 came with his earring. And we've got Shewo Kuti! <laughs> He's the more powerful. More Biggest power. bird. Biggest <laughs> bird. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's where you prefer. Yes. Where? So we've what's, got to. What song popularized that against Speedy? No, 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 no. It's true. That what sound. Uh, no, speeding. Oh, okay. Speed no, no, no. Mm -mm. That's a. Oh, Birdman. Yes, Birdman. Birdman. That's Birdman. No, that was Birdman. Yeah. Birdman. So, guys, you know that we're going to have undiluted Afrobeat conversation and a lot of important conversations. We've got. Shemukuti, we've got Afrobeat Sugar Daddy in the building. <laughs> we've got upcoming Afrobeat, um, what should I call you now? Sugar Daddy too, but yeah, so I let's. Mr. I missed her. Thank you so I much, So Thank you so much. <laughs> no records. You do. You absolutely do. How are you feeling, Shem? I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, trying, I'm, I'm trying to thrive. You know, I'm so I'm out here. You look so cool. My sister, that's the only way to blend in these days. Trust me, people think it's by. <laughs> You have to just come, come, just. Because Lagos these days, man. Go easy. It's go not easy. easy. If a kuti is saying Lagos is not easy, what's happening? Omo, you don't touch everybody with that, sir. Omo. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't, how many kutis have you been talking to? You have been complaining that it's not easy since 1960. Fact, though. <laughs> <laughs> They've been telling us it's not easy. <laughs> Bra. That's a strong brand. If bra. <laughs> bro, you are the ones that are just joining our Fair enough. not easy party. I, I mean, did you, um, the Fumilaya Lion movie, I think, I think puts a lot of things in perspective for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, into I think a lot of people were even like I don't know how people did, maybe do we blame history or do we blame people for not doing their research? Like a lot of people were even saying, how come the one thing that I knew about this woman was that she was mm. the first woman to, to drive, drive a car? car. Like. Gee, the history was always there. You just didn't read. Yeah, but that's what they taught us as well. That's what they taught Exactly. So, if that was the highlight, according to the people that fixed our education of yep. our life, you know, mm. why would you want to research? Because she drove a car. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, mm. I think it's not only on my grandmother that that is an issue. Yeah. It's an issue generally on... Africa and Africans in general, like our history is some kind of subtext of real history. Hmm. You know, Africans have not really done anything, no, there's nothing to check. You know, go and read UK history, American history. Bongo Park. Yeah. Mongo Park discovered even, I mean, Mongo Park teach us that one in our school, you know, when I say that all the time, like, Mongo Park discovered River Niger. <coughs> what does that mean? Our stupid. ancestors are incapable of oh. recognizing a river in front of them. No, 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 Oshia Abracadabra. No, I mean like Niger. I mean people were living there. I like mean, literally. There. And to them it was just a river. Was there. But they didn't even know what it is. <laughs> this is a river. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> Tell Fantabulous. us more. Tell us more. <laughs> it's liquid. You know, it's, it's is the water real? Hydrogen. <laughs> Nigga. But but speaking about the importance of like her story from Laiokuti and how like we just discussed history did not focus on a lot of important things that she did. For the Kutis, were you guys bothered about it? When you guys always hear people have that narrative of she's the first person that drove a car, did you ever feel the need to say, no, as a family, we need to tell them what she did? Did you, did, were you guys bothered about the narrative at all? No, not really. I don't mm. think, like, no, let, me not, let me speak for myself. Okay. Because my family has some people that are real stickler for like details. details and yeah. So probably, I'm sure my cousin Nikkei must have told people that 
what you know, what you're saying. I'm sure cousin Nikki has definitely been like, that's not all she's done. She's <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, but for me, I've never really been that person to say, oh, I know you're getting it wrong and try and just educate people every time they have a common misconception about any part of my life or my family's life because then that's what I'll spend my whole day doing. Mm. Because for some reason, you know, people really have a lot of misconceptions about my family and what we've done or what we... Like, even I, for example, actually believed for a long time that my dad bought a Benz and cut the roof off and used it to catch... I can't yeah. And I, I believe this because I grew up hearing it everywhere. Yeah. Until one day somebody said it from my dad, and I said, "What? When? <laughs> 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 you know, but then we don't understand the larger narrative because to us in the new generation, the story sounds like, man, what a gangster thing to do, right? Yeah. But back then, you know, when so many Nigerians were just coming out of colon- colonization. colonization, just ended in 1960. Yeah. This story they said happened in 1973. So many Nigerians were suffering. So things were so bad for a lot of people. And my father is driving a bed, bought a bed, cut the roof off to load firewood Good. to prove a point to anybody. You know? So yeah. I couldn't have done that then. But there was a rumor that he did it then. Yeah. Because you know they wanted people to think that he was crazy and mm. didn't care and was just like frivolous with his money. You think that was why they, that they, said, they said he did it? I have a different theory. I think people, a lot of people said the car was the car that the rich people were driving. Yes. And he wanted to bastardize it. Or but something. my dad already was, you know, one thing people do not, people say Fela fought government. Yeah. Fela did not fight the government of Nigeria. Fela fought the rich people of Nigeria. Hmm. The elite. He, I mean, listen to his songs. Go and listen to his back catalog of songs. Lady, <coughs> uh, uh, Shenshema, Swagbe uh, Angpaku, Ikoyi Blindness, Ikoyi Vasos Mushi, plethora of songs just attacking, you know, the rich people of Nigeria. That's why the rich people also gang with the government. You know, as they were, as the government was physically beating them up, the rich Nigerians that own the media were backing them up with the lies and the propaganda about him to make whatever punishment <laughs> that they were giving to him yeah. seem just. See, exactly. But can't I say that a lot of people might look at him and also say that he was privileged? Don't you think? Of course. Uh, my father was very privileged. His mother was one of the richest women yeah. in the world when he was growing up. Yeah. You know, nothing comes from nothing. This yeah. is what I tell people all the time, you know, like I wouldn't be here if my father was not fella. Yeah. And fella would not be where he is if his mother Anything was not, not to an from a liar. You know, and that's just the way nothing comes from nothing. In, in in the world, you know, um, we stand on the shoulders of of the great ones before us. Even like when I'm doing shows and stuff, I say, your father's yeah. message, your father's message. I'm like, stop. It is not my father's message. It is Africa's message. My father inherited it from his mother. Who inherited it from Nkrumah? Yeah. Who got it from Marcus Gavi? And so on and oh, so forth. So has been coming for e- eons. You know, to personalize to one person's property means you are also detaching yourself from it. You know. It's fe- no, it's not fella's story. It's Africa's story. <laughs> because that's, it, re- it represents a lot of things. Yes, it does. A yeah. lot of things. But speaking yeah. about fella's story and you making reference to the fact that there is nothing wrong with people, like Tolani talk about privilege and, and you saying that, yeah, fella is, was a privileged kid. Then you now saying that as a person, when people say, oh, you, were, you won't be here now if you, we didn't have fella. Yep. When people have those conversations and they're like, oh, Shimon, you're here because of your father, do you sometimes get upset by the conversation when people try to say it? Who gets upset when they win the lottery? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Show me one person that won lottery one day and just started to say, oh, man, what the f- I'm angry, man. What the fuck, man? Get out, man. God damn. What the f- I'm angry, man. Ah. <laughs> I won the daddy lottery. Hey. Sorry. Suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> Denounce my father. <laughs> but yeah, I, I could if he had done things that you know made me feel like he wasn't worthy and I don't but my father is still the he's still my favorite person in the world. Hmm. You can Even say that thing that you want to say. He's still the greatest. <laughs> no, he's my he's my he's my personal favorite person that I've ever met. Hmm. Even though I only spent 14 years with him, they were 14 awesome years. Hmm. Nobody that I've met since you know, has been able to make me feel the way my father made me feel as a human being. Mm. Really, he was my best friend. He was everything. So, yeah. Was yeah, he a cool dad? No, my dad was a cool dad to me. Ah, okay. 
<laughs> Listen, yeah. this is one thing also you have to know about life. Everybody's experiences and stories are different. And time, time is an immense, I don't know what, how, I don't know how powerful time is, but time, so the person that I knew as my dad is not the same person my elder siblings yeah. knew as their dad. So if we would talk to my brother, for example, he'll tell you, oh, that was a terrible dad. It was not, he had my time. But if you ask me, I'll be like, man. That was my guy. <laughs> we had my time. <laughs> we were together all the time. We did everything together. He did so, so for me, he was an he was an he was an amazing father. But I don't think he was an amazing father all his life. Like when people meet a politician in Nigeria, he's dashing their money, they are his yeah. boy. Yeah. You got he's a good man, he's a good man. Yeah. Calm down. He's good to you. you. And you are not everybody. You know. Yeah. So definitely there will be people in our family that don't even like my dad, but you know. It's what it is. Fair. Um, <laughs> speaking of that thing of lottery, I want to I want to get silly a little bit. Do you guys really believe that the the winners of the lottery are kind of cursed or something like that? Yes, the gift and the curse for sure. You know, one thing people do in life is that when it's good, we want to be all in, and when it's bad, we want to be like, ah, <laughs> yeah. you know, being fellas son will definitely open doors for you. And now, this is what your detractors will see. Oh, your father's name opens doors. But the other side of that, the it's curse of that, is that as soon as you step in, there are expectations. Yep. Yeah. Nobody has time for you to say, you're just, oh, give me, uh, uh. there's a standard, and you have to be there. Yeah. I was, and I was 14 when my dad died. Yeah. So everybody was comparing me at 14 to a musical master. You understand? Yeah, yeah. I remember those times. So that's the gift <coughs> and the curse, right? Yeah. Okay, so I could be the front man of the Egypt 80. So, but everybody wanted, wanted you to be as good as Fela at 14. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. And know? the funny thing is that Fela was not Fela at 14. Yeah. Yep. Fela was not even Fela at 25, yeah. at 30. Yeah. <laughs> Fella was a fella at 30. <laughs> yeah. So how was it like being the leader or the front man of EG80, which is a very storied, legendary band as a teenager? That was exciting for me in life, you know. It was one of my most exciting times. Because for me at that time, it was just like fun. I was having a good time. I'd been playing since I was eight. Yeah. You know, because my dad, when he was alive, I used to open the shows for him. Most people don't know this, they think, you know, like when I do interviews, they say, oh, so you inherited your father's sex stop. There's no way it's written that after me, he's shown or whatever like that, anything like that. But it's just that I'd always been in the band, you know, since I was eight. All my life, I've been in that band, you know. After my father's death, the family was like, okay, Fela is no longer alive, so what's up with the band? They had a meeting, like, you know, it was, it was fun while it lasted, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But since I was in the band, I just said, you know, Fela really, oh, sorry, no, Fela really respected his band, and he used to always say it at home. My band is the most important thing, man. My band is the most important thing. You know, and me, I'm there, your son. I mean, I just, I just supposed to make me feel your band is the most important thing, man. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so in, in a way, it was me trying to give back to this guy that was so great to me. Anyway, even though he's. <laughs> I said to my siblings and my uncles, like, what if I kept playing with the band? You know, instead of us disbanding the Egypt 80, which was also at that time already the most recorded band in the world. Yeah. You know, Fela's band at that time, they had done 49 albums, you know, with Fela, and there was, nobody even came close. You know, so this was an African <laughs> musical institution also, in a way, it wasn't just a band. So my family was like, okay, we don't have any extra money to be giving you, shall keep what you make. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> keep what I make. <laughs> keep what you make. Boy, I was balling. <laughs> <laughs> when I was we had this old shrine then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and people would come and I would make, oh my God. That I'm still able to keep myself together like this at this age. It's just like praises to the ancestors, you know? Because I grew up like too quick. That's what I have to say. Yeah. But yeah, that was it. Um, so I just kept playing with the band. So for me, it was never like, oh, I'm the front man of Egypt 80. I'd always been in Egypt 80. And I'm happy that I never really took the title of band leader. 
also because the tradition of the band, Fela was also just the front man and owner. Yeah. There has always been a band leader. Because yeah. the band were their own thing and they, you know, that's how you liaise and because you can't talk to everybody at once. Yeah. So we always appointed a band leader. You know, so it stayed that way. So yeah, for me it was never really that crazy thing. For me it was duty and fun. So this man right here is it's like an OG to me, right? <laughs> and um, when Madi launched, um, I remember we had a conversation. Like I was talking about his vocals. I don't know if you remember this conversation. Yeah. And <clears throat> he's, he, I said, I don't. the vocals don't sit well in the music, right? And then he corrected me and said, Afrobeats requires, Afrobeats requires a different level of technicality when it comes to vocals. Like your vocals need to break. <clears throat> for you to then be able to sing in this particular way. Is that true? That's true. And also with Afrobeats music making, one must really, really want to say something. Hmm. Also. There's a spirit to that. In the earlier years of my writing as well, the, uh, the hardest part of making the music was to in it. write my lyrics in oh. voice it. Many things, many things was quite easy because it was my first album. I've been writing songs and it was time so I <coughs> put song and I worked them. And by the time I was doing my second album, my third album, I wasn't as conscious as I was as I am now. You know, it was my early twenties. You know, yeah, I knew what was going on, but I wasn't studying. But as I studied, the more I studied and I really had the message to to pass across, the more my the more it be, the easier it became to do the vocals, to write the lyrics, to... That being said, if you go back to Fela's original sound, sound yeah. with Kola Lobitos, yeah. if it wasn't really telling a story, Fela was not really big vocally as well. So, with that, I think it's a, it, <clears throat> we must create the, we must understand the evolution of the artist. Our expectations cannot be expected to dictate to artists you know what they should make you know so uh, for me i don't really think it's here or there you know in his case i think what he's doing is exactly what he wants to do because my day is the most talented yeah. out of everybody yeah. i've of, read that of all of us yeah well wait first <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about most talented <laughs> but he's the best yeah of all of us let me i don't know if i'm most talented mr man because that boy's <laughs> that boy's head is very big i'm telling you i will call him sometimes he doesn't reply for days i'm telling you but it's the sweetest of all my nephews you know so speaking about evolution so you talked about evolution when you talk about afrobeat when people have the conversation you want to stop up your drink should we get someone to do that for you i don't mind doing it myself okay yes please Okay, cool. So, you spoke about evolution. Now, when music lovers, music heads, when they speak about Afrobeats and Afrobeats, <clears throat> do you think that the Afrobeats that... Is it right to say that the Afrobeat that Felakuti created has evolved to this Afrobeat? Do you think it's okay when people say that, oh, it's, we have moved, like, Afrobeat has now... Afrobeat with the, without the S has evolved to Afrobeat and it is okay for us to just have the afro beats with the s that we have now and i'm asking this because if it was uh, true you're right and no, we finish okay I'm, done. okay I'm asking this because now we're in the era of more people we have more people doing like afro beats with the s right and we have people still have conversations around afro beats the one that felakuti pioneered and said that and now compare this one to the to the afro beat and say oh afro beat used to <clears throat> used to make a lot of statements social political statements we had an interview that we saw with buju Bantin where he spoke about how Afrobeats use the importance of the message that used to be in Afrobeat fella, how Afrobeat was a tool to share, like to talk about social political issues, and now the fuckery that we have with these Afrobeats. <laughs> so and I, he used very conservative language, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have the youngins saying stuff like we don't need um, Youngins saying stuff like Afro beats that we have now don't need to be socio political. It can be what we have now, which is the Bedu. What do you think? I Me, mean, I make political music, socio political commentary. So definitely, I think, I think music must be, at least African music must have a message. Hmm. 
I stand in the school of thought with my dad that yes, in England and America they can make music about anything they like, whatever. Mm. But in Africa, our music can be about whatever. Mm. Because we are not in the same situation as they are. Mm. And I mm. truly believe that. And to even make that matter more, I also believe that our national development cannot be divorced from our national talents. Without the talents, and I'm not talking about artistic talents, mathematical talent, engineering mm. talent, without these talents engaging in our national discourse towards development, mm. Nigeria will never develop. Mm. Never. And our education, what the Europeans have made sure with the education that they've given to us through their subsidiaries, our elites, is that <laughs> we believe that our talent is for personal use. Mm. Okay, so that being said, I agree with Puju because that's just facts. And it's crazy that there are more Jamaican songs, reggae songs, talking about African issues and African songs. I mean, that's just sad, mm. you know. But that being said, if Afrobeats was the evolution of Afrobeat, then for sure Afrobeat is no longer necessary. Just the way uh, uh, the Homo erectus, the Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah. the, homo sapien. We are Homo sapien. No, we are yeah, homo we are Homo sapien. Yes. Yeah. The Homo erectus and the Neanderthal are no longer necessary. Yeah, because we You are. understand? But Afrobeats is not an evolution of Afrobeat. No. Just because the name, they take the same name, does it mean it's just like saying Nigeria is an evolution of the Yoruba or your kingdom? That is the your kingdom that became Nigeria. Mm -hmm. No, just because the your kingdom is in Nigeria doesn't mean it's the your kingdom that evolved into Nigeria, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. May I personally feel musically that Afrobeats is more an evolution of Fuji and Juju music into the modern era, yeah. you know, than it is of Afrobeat music. That's just what I think. You know. But <clears throat> are they not influences though? Yeah, of course. Uh, so now, that their fellow influences, fellow sound influences people across the globe. Yep. Not only in Afrobeats music, yep. hip hop music. I cannot tell you how many samples, samples, yeah. direct quotes from fellow that are in hip hop. Mm. Yep. You know, uh, funk musicians, jazz musicians. I mean, plethora of artists. You know. Uh, have sampled and have been influenced by Fela. Yeah, even I mean, globally speaking, the evolution of Afrobeat music is not really happening in Africa. Hmm. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. it's happening in South America. Asia now. With Asia, yeah, a lot of bands now in Asia. In in the US, yeah, so a lot of Afrobeat bands trying to reshape all the sound. People. Yeah, yeah. Antibalas, cool. for example. Exa yeah, that's one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Uh, so there are a few bands out there that are really like in almost a par with me and my brother. Hmm. You know, when I mean like the sound the, what they are doing. Sound wise, nah. They still have a long way to go. I mean in terms of the exposure they have, what they are doing with Afrobeat music. Okay. You know. Uh yeah, they are they are really big bands out there. You know. I mean one of them I did a song with and it's the most successful song that I have. Who? Is it not <laughs> Yeah, new when new when yeah, yeah, orchestra, yeah, yeah. and we did a copy a sample of my we sampled one of my dad's yeah. Yeah. covered one of my dad's That's songs. Big, actually, yeah. Opposite yeah. people, um, yeah. listen, is the biggest song I have. Hmm. I can't believe that shit. No, you can't cuss. I know that it's not the cussing I stop. I just okay, like you can't believe it. Like I can't believe that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I snatch, I clutch my pearls. Cuss you. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the, that's the world of Afrobeat music. Hmm. You know, there's not a lot of attention paid to that in Africa. Hmm. You know, so people just make up the rhetoric that they want and they run with it. Hmm. You know. But don't you think that we saying that African music needs to have a political angle is telling artists what to do? No, I said national talent. National talent. Cannot be divorced from national development. Yeah. So uh, artists don't necessarily have to make political statements, but they can make national statements. With their music. Towards, yeah, yeah, towards uplifting our people, towards where we need to go, you know. Where Africa needs to go. Yeah. I hear that. Uh, but that's still like... That's what I think we should be doing. Now, let's not mistake that for me thinking somebody doing something else is wrong. Okay. Hmm. I'm not doing... I don't, I don't play right and wrong, and I don't play win or lose. 
That's why I don't gamble. I'm doing life and death. That's what me I base my decisions on. I don't want to be right. I don't want to be wrong. Anybody can be right, wrong, win, lose. All these things we do, I don't, I'm not have time. I know my situation is a life and death situation. And it's on that, it's on that premise that I make decisions. For us to live, survive, me I'm not out of surviving. For us to thrive, yeah. Yeah. national good. talent cannot be divorced from national development. Now, do what you will with that. It doesn't Awareness. make you right or wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's actually deep. Do what you will with that. Well, you know what he's trying to say. Because of that, it's 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 talk. What he's talking about essentially is awareness. It's not ex, it's not entire. What you can do with this is, depends on you, but at least be aware <laughs> of, of why you're doing this. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I feel like I hear that. I I I one hundred percent understand the POV that you. I agree actually that you have, which is that um, with arts generally. I think it is important. I also feel like there, there's some sort of responsibility when it comes to um, to having some talent. I feel like, like you said, I don't think that people with talent should sit as a personal thing, like for personal use. Only. 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 I think that's the problem. The only is the problem because sometimes it feels like, oh, as an artist or as, a, as someone with talent, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. But it's like, as an African, like you said, we are not on the same level as the Americans when it comes to development, when it comes to like national issues. So we might be doing ourselves a disservice by trying to do music in the way that they do music with the level of development that they have. I have. think like most other professions, many people in music see it as a way to escape the Nigerian situation. Yeah. Not as a way to fix the Nigerian situation. Which is understandable. Yes, but it's also, I'm sorry. Counterproductive. Exactly. And it's sad. Mm. It's sad. It's really sad that we are afraid to do what we have to do for ourselves. Mm. And it's not, a, it's not an artist thing. I say it all the time. When people say, oh, artists are not doing what they need to do, I mean, people are capping and they are looking for an easy way out. Yeah. It's not enough that artists make conscious music. If the lawyer does not care about justice, the mm. bankers don't care the about... Don't care. Uh, wealth creation for the nation the doctors don't care about health teachers don't care about education yes. police don't care about security i mean don't care about it is it is pathetic to now start saying the musicians are not conscious when the society is not because now the truth is that there's conscious music and I, I will not go to strip club to look for a nun no. just the way it is madness to go to the desert and look for snow. <laughs> Not even water now. <laughs> You're looking for yeah. snow. No, no. You tell me, okay, till they were all right. So feed me, brother, me. Bossy. A bossy, bossy. So, you know, you expect people that have, they've not at any point claimed the title conscious in as artists. Yeah. yeah. They make secular party music. music. Yeah. yeah. Now you're jumping on these people to change who they are because of what you need but what you need is out there also there are artists already making conscious music yeah. you know the truth is people that don't want to engage conscious won't engage you now blame the people that they like already what they like for not making them change who they are come on it doesn't make sense you are the one that will change who you are it's not the artist that will change who you are the artist is there to validate and inspire your own already made decisions. So if we're already in the life, the street life, you're outside, our motor. <laughs> that's it. We're outside, our motor. That actually, that's it. We that's what it is. That's the yeah, we're outside, we're outside, our motor. Yeah, our year. I'm not. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Our year. We're outside. Exactly. So if that's we're outside. It will be outside. <laughs> <laughs> when you are here to go inside, you go inside. You know, that's the thing. And I also think the, uh, the media plays a role in the fact that probably when Nigerian people might maybe lack some blame in this issue that our media, do, they do not curate a complete artistic picture mm. for, for Nigerians. Mm. The media itself plays a role in regurgitating the elitist narrative. You know, so this is what the elitists like for their party and their weddings and their, so this is what people must listen to all the time. 
you know this is what the elites want to say so this is what we print in our paper all the time there's no individual reflection or investigation to say oh this is something the people might like okay this is something i want to hear you know so nigerians don't really have a full vision of global sound i mean the rolling stones will come to nigeria and their concert will flop 100 percent see over 100 percent exactly so is this the fault of Nigerian people? Or oh, sorry, is this the fault of Rolling Stones that their music is not good? Or Nigerian people are not to be given that musical education? Which no Appreciate foreign this. artist can outsell Burna Boy in Nigeria right now. Yeah. Facts. And that's a good thing though. Yeah, it is. Localization. That's what it's a good yeah. thing. Can I ask you? I, have, I just want to lie to you. I've been having some serious conversations. <laughs> like, it's, it's a deep dream. Any soon. Like, Moji, I think Put it deep like a intellectual and this suru. Baba. And they attack me. Some lot of big guard me up. There is there is this meme, right? Which is there's a meme. I like to use it against us now, fans. Sorry. Because where you were drinking, where you're drinking. I'm an Asna fan, so you know. I know. He knows. That's why I, I know. That's why I said. That's why I said. <laughs> I, know, I think I know where you're going. <laughs> No. Wait. Okay. Before you land, <laughs> be careful. I can leave. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so, that meme. What were you drinking in that meme? Ah! Okay. <laughs> I can't tell everybody the name of that drink. All my friends love it. Everybody I've met that I've introduced to that drink, they love it. They want it. I tell them, ask me. I'll buy it for you. Do you have any Niger? Especially you Lagos boys. Eh, she ain't feel okay. From woman to alcohol, you will bastardize it. True. If I tell them the name of that drink now, Zolova. Before you know it, the fake, the fake well. will start coming out. So I don't tell you the name. Yeah. But the nickname is that inside that drink, there's lemongrass. Hmm. So the botanical name for lemongrass, that's how I found out. Because when I was reading the ingredients, yeah, I liked yeah. the drink so much. Yeah. I to know what was inside. And I saw one. I said, Akile Le, Molo Gugu Le. Simbobogon Seratus. That's the title of this episode. What, what did he call it? Simbobogon Seratus. Simbobogon. That is the botanical <laughs> name of <laughs> lemongrass. <laughs> so, is this, so, me and my friends just call it Simbobogon. <laughs> I can't tell you the real name of the drink. Is because it, is, it a bra- is it made? Abisho, it's made. Abisho, 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 it's made in Ghana. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's the challenge. Hey, <laughs> say. <laughs> if, if the Ghanaians then, <laughs> we do the thing inside. <laughs> but I like Ghana pigeon so much. Oh. I love Ghana pigeon. The way they bounce water around. Oh. The grammatical dysfunction of it, the way everything so scatters around. You know the part I came about Ghana when when they're not writing, you now see three, three, three. three. I don't understand, <laughs> bro. When did three enter this thing? When did number three <laughs> enter? Yeah. I, and but <gasps> that, that's one thing I don't like about like. Hey, pa, there's something you don't like about the Charlie? No, 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 no. There's, that's one thing I like. What about. you don't like for inside? No, not about <laughs> there. Okay. Like that's one thing I see about other cultures that I don't see in a lot of Nigerian culture. Like South Africans are typing and they are putting like someone is saying so South Africans are not something 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 they continue in English or not like yeah the same thing with Ghanaians Nigerians is just if you are not writing a pure pigeon or pure, pure English, English. Yeah. I don't know who you are writing to me and no, my no, friends no no not on chat so. No, on, on social media. media. Yeah. On like, we're talking about on social media. On social media. Like, we don't have media. culture. We don't do that yet. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, but Omo, um, text to my friends. Like, I like you, but I'm more liquid. There's no way to swear for a person in English. English swear, you know, the. You, know, yeah, are you are crazy. <laughs> you are. Shock my normal pie. Eh, Now you're. You messed up. No! Crazy, man. How do you feel about Astas Prospects? Uh, listen. How do you feel about what? Astas Prospects. Prospects. Whatever it is, we are better than Man United. Uh, uh, better uh, than Chelsea. Is okay. I agree with Chelsea. Our worst enemy, Tottenham, far away from us. <laughs> the only problem we have in Premier League is Man City. 
What and about... everybody has the problem in Europe. Yeah. What about Liverpool? That's also a dead club, too. You know, I, I, studied, I studied in Liverpool. I was not an Arsenal supporter. <laughs> My second club in England is Liverpool, actually, because I went to school in Liverpool. Only classic people support Liverpool. Yeah. Mm. How was it like studying in Liverpool? Liverpool? When last in Liverpool? What? How was it like studying in Liverpool? Oh my but, god! Because that's a very it's fucking amazing. How about to get the accent? Chicken, mate. <laughs> chicken and chips. <laughs> what about Taya? Fish and chips, mate. <laughs> what about Taya? Oi! <laughs> uh, Liverpool is like, it's like, it's like it's a lake. I love it. You know, I like Liverpool, you know, use these houses yeah. and it's very, it's very African as well. Yeah. Mm. It's one of those few cities in the world that has a lot of African people with African names, African heritage, never been to Africa. Hmm. Oh, It was a dark port, port city, city, the slavery, yeah. everything. So many people also came, the first group of Africans that came to England in the 50s came in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And many of them stayed there and, you know, so, wow, Liverpool was exciting. But then it was like, uh, now Liverpool has changed. Very like gentrification. Yeah, no, no, no. There's not, there's not too much to gentrify. By the time I got there, talk states was already born. You know, in, in UK, it's not like America, where the poverty line is white and blackish, you know. There, poverty mix. It mix. <laughs> there, there are more of us poor, but there are more of them poorer because they didn't allow it. Not a lot of black people are there, like America as well. Yeah. You know, when you move out of London, and London is kind of like cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan mix. cultural mix. But outside, you know, in all this, like St. Helens, you go to like Newcastle, all these places, you know, you find a lot of... So yeah, in that aspect, Liverpool was fun for me though. It was, and it was the first time I was out of home, you know, like coming to America for me. <laughs> Man was coming to Liverpool. So this prince from his Afrobeats palace, <laughs> I said when I was going to school, you don't know how sport I was growing up. It, and up to now, I'm glad to say I still haven't done laundry in my life. I don't know how to wash anything. Anyway, I'm not bragging, but let me continue. <laughs> when I was going to school, you know, sleeping in British Airways now, sleeping in my business class seats, snoring, in my dream, <coughs> right inside the dream, a thought crossed my mind. How will you wash your clothes? <laughs> you don't understand? <laughs> that thought woke me up like I got, like somebody slapped me. Like we are possessed. <laughs> Washing machine. <laughs> Sleep back. <laughs> oh my god. You, I wish, I wish, you know one thing I wish for? I wish all I wish all the privileged people that I know were like this. Like admit their privilege. Yeah. Because it's like I'm not so privileged if you ask me. Are you sure? Everybody's trying to get on this poverty porn and shit. Like no, but you know, me, I think I, I understand my privilege. privilege because we worked for it. I could see my father working to provide. So I appreciated. Yeah. You know, and I would meet you and say, nothing is given. By the time my dad died at 14, I was ready to. I took care of myself from the age of 14. Yes, yes. I was <laughs> I got this inheritance money. I can't lie. It's nice. I, I didn't start, I didn't start from the bottom. Now I'm here. <laughs> I can't lie. <laughs> I can't lie, but I was working already. At 14, I had I had skill, I had something to do, you know. Uh, so the privilege of my life, and I, and I grew up with my dad in Kalakuta, you know, in the Republic, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and I understood life in a socialist concept also. My father's wealth wasn't for me alone. Yes, I was privileged that he would make me happy before anybody else in the house. But I understood that it wasn't for us. My dad had over like 500 employees. Huh. Like, why really do it? You're just in our house. Okay, we had carpenters among them that worked, uh, the musicians. But then everybody else was just like surviving in the community under my dad. All the billions this man should have given me as inheritance was spent giving people weekly salaries, paying these people. Every day we had an allowance. Everybody in Kalakuta, Shrine, the Republic, daily allowance and weekly salary. So, you know, that was how I grew up. You know, my privilege was that I got extra from that. You know, that was my privilege. You know, it wasn't as if, you know, I didn't know where I was coming from. And, you know, we were going around with Sirene and <laughs> President. And, so I think that kind of privilege is different. You know, where the responsibility that comes with it is not schooled into the 
beneficiary. You also see life from that. Yes. Yeah. I, I, the responsibility and duty, I was made to understand from a young age that my privilege wasn't given. It wasn't something that, you know, I just got because uh, it was, I had to earn it also to a certain extent. And the more I grew up, the more I had to earn it until, you know, the lines between privilege and duty were Sapa. completely blurred, you know. <laughs> You know. But how was it like? Because you just made mention of like you've spoken about your privilege, spoken about you know fella passing on like the inheritance and all of that, and everybody mm. in Kalakuta earning money, even those that are not even his children. How have you guys been able to maintain? Because you come from a large family. My family also large. We're mm. only six kids. Okay, well, one of my six kids. One of my sisters is late now. So. So when I say like last time, I'm like the entire Kalakuta, everybody, the community. The community. Oh, the community. Yes. Oh. Like, how how have you guys been able to maintain that unity? Oh, the community. That... As soon as my father died, shut that shit down. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Nobody will go fell out for anybody else. Yeah. Who is going to fell out for them? <laughs> so go home. You Bye. guys got one fella and that's it. It was good while it lasted, folks. Who is going to for you? <laughs> Who is going to fell out for you, bro? <laughs> I wanted to know if you guys are still giving them the allowance. And actually, right, well, Actually, but my brother, okay. my brother actually, he, now that he's grown older, he's stepping up. You know, the shrine, this new shrine, he has like, maybe, I don't know, probably like 100 people that he takes care of that live and in the organization. They don't have to be there. You know, so I think he's getting old. My my elder brother was the one that rebelled against my dad the most. When we were young. <clears throat> well, I'm still young. He's the only one that is old, I told him. <laughs> <laughs> but growing up now, he's the one that is becoming our father. Yeah. Funny enough. He's the one that is most like fella. In behavior, attitude, lifestyle, the things he does, how he does, you know. You know, so talk do about you, time. Do you think, <laughs> do you think they, 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 they it clashed with him a lot because they were similar? I don't know. I wasn't really, you know, my dad died when I was 14. Yeah. They are comf my, and my brother is 20 years my senior. People don't know that. So that's why they always say that family and I are not close. <laughs> yes, when my dad died, we have some family issues there. But for a long time, that has been done. We are not really like rolling together because he's 20 years my senior. Yeah. You know, he's old enough to be my father. Yeah. He's not my senior brother in the way your five year old brother is older than you with three years or four years. 20 yeah, years. He's 62 and 41. You know, like we have nothing in common. Absolutely nothing except music, you know, and the love we have for each other, you know. So uh, probably that's why people don't see us like, you know. But how did you guys develop your personal relationship? Did you have to make an effort? As of person? course. I tell people that love is not a feeling, it's a decision. You, you choose what you love Facts. and stick with it. Facts. You know? Facts. Um, let's talk about Grammys. Do you care about the Grammys? I care about the Grammys as much as I care about the musicians that make up the Academy, that make up the Grammys. Mm. Mm. You know, being the fact that I'm part of that global musician family, yes, the American Academy is the strongest in the world, so big up to them. If they recognize us, we have to respect them, not because it is the Grammys, because it is our colleagues as well. You know, that it is their academy. Hopefully, we build ours that has that same prestige yeah. and stuff. You know, but other than that, yeah, the Grammys is just another. I watch show. I mean, fella never got one. Neither Which did Bob weird. Marley. Neither, yeah, you know. Weird. Yeah. So make of that what you will. Yeah. Make of that what you will. Speaking about the shrine, I know yeah. you you are performing at the shrine when now tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Is this go, is this going to go out today? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, oh wow. Well, yeah. 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 Well, tomorrow, thirty first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, shrine tomorrow, thirty first of August, twenty twenty four, ten p.m. till four a.m. Don't miss that show. It's the best show happening in Lagos. It's the biggest, it's the best kept secret in town. You know, those that know, know. What time are you going to come out? Midnight, I'm on stage. 12 on the dot? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So now, um, you're performing tomorrow at the, at, uh, at the Shrine. And I was at the Shrine. <laughs> you're like, what were you oh my God. That? You're saying it was your first time. At the Shrine to watch a performance. When did you go? Ever. Wait, ever, wow. ever. Really? I, have I have never. When did you go? Um... Days ago, ago. Two weeks when ago. no 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 when Fe when Femi was performing on Sunday on Sunday ah okay yeah the Sunday before so I've nice. never watched anybody that's crazy. so, you, so went, you went to see the best show already 
So the po- <laughs> <laughs> so um so Femi Kuti performed and I know that Madi also the king. I hope you heard that. You heard right through that in there. Yeah. <laughs> and Madi performed. So um as someone who experienced that for the first time, I know that the ticket was two thousand naira to go in to watch. How do you guys maintain that? And and I heard it was five hundred naira before. Yeah. And it was increased to two thousand naira because of dollar. Because of yeah. dollar, and also I heard that when it was increased, um, Femi like had to explain to people why it had to be increased now. So I'm not asking. You have a show at the shrine, and people are paying two thousand naira. Are you guys intentionally doing that so that people can be can it be for, for it to be more affordable? And with that kind of yeah. money, how are you guys able to maintain the shrine? Well, that that is a question for my sister. She's the genius here. Shout out to YK. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeni and Nicola Bukusi. She's, she's the glue that holds everything together and also i think my family we've, we have to understand we're not trying to make the money back from shrine right now mm. we're not the dangotes and your tedolas and all these your other billionaires that mm. whatever services the uh, uh glow owner was the, all these nigerians that own all these things i want to make all the billions from you right now understand that life is long <laughs> so fucking long if the shrine is there it's our property we don't mind making the money back in 50 years. As long as the people can experience what is theirs. You understand? A lot of Nigerians cannot even experience petrol. Mm-hmm. They told us if they remove subsidy, we will not have scarcity again. They said they've removed subsidy. This, this scarcity is the worst one I've experienced wow. in the last maybe 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. After they've removed subsidy. And they're charging us top rate dollar. Everything, our internet is the most expensive per capita in the world. Meaning, when you say per capita, meaning the percentage of the minimum wage Which that it costs to, 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 purchase. to purchase the internet data is the most expensive in the world. Our cement, top expensive in the world. Same thing. So Nigerians are used, look at the, they rent a house in a country where minimum wage, they say, this agree is 70,000. Look at what rent is saying all over the city, <laughs> everywhere in the country, priced out of people's ranges out of the range that people can afford because people want to make their money in five years in six years nobody is in need for the long run the kutis are in need for the long run oh. this is our country if we have a club i told my brother that my next investment now is real estate i want to do uh, cheap housing for people oh. it's my house you are renting it keep paying the money one day i'll make my money back i don't have to make it back right now that's how we commit to our people that's how we show that we are in it together it's a shame that the so-called biggest artists in Nigeria, that the poor people actually love the most, they cannot even afford to experience them. Yeah. It's the same thing with our athletes. The best Nigerian athletes do not even compete for Nigeria. It's how neocolonialism, neoliberalism has set the black people, or African people up for the world to exploit our resources is not for us to use. Our land is used to grow cash crops, rubber, cocoa, tea, coffee, all these things for other people to enjoy. Why we cannot afford food? The same land to grow food for us and rice and the things that we want to eat is dragging with palm oil. Because they have to grow palm oil to go and serve some soap maker in <coughs> Switzerland or somewhere. So, so this is the situation we are in. And as the Kutis, we don't want to partake in that. You know, it's a decision, it's, a, it's an ideology. So it's not about the money to run shrine. Don't let anybody tell you that if they charge you cheaper, money will not come outside to run the business. Because they're looking for humongous profits. Mm. You know, so what you have asked, how do you make him profit? And I yeah. said, ah, we don't make a lot of profits. Mm. But we make enough to run the place and keep the doors open and the lights on. Mm. Fair. Do you also think it's also about the community? Because it's a community. Yeah. It's a global community that associates and identifies yeah. with that place. Yeah. Right? And that you can't quantify with the amount of money that is being made. People mm-hmm. that are leaving their countries to come and experience the shrine because they're Collaboration. Exactly. Collaboration. Collaboration is the so, is it's a cosmopolitan event these days. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. everybody from yeah, it's global. This year so. we're launching in Japan this year as well. Oh. Ooh. Why Japan? Oh, Loki, Japan is one of the my personal biggest markets. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, uh, I wasn't surprised when they called from there for, for the Afrobeat. Collaboration. For the Collaboration franchise. That I wasn't is surprised. fucking crazy. Wow. I wasn't surprised at all. Afrobeat, Fela, 
Japan is the only country, okay, no, and Austria. For some reason, when I'm in these two countries, if I come down from breakfast, there are people waiting to take my autograph. I come out to go out of the hotel, there are people waiting to take my autograph. I'm going to do sound check, there are people waiting to take it. Outside, I feel, I feel like a, a Justin Bieber. <laughs> Pop star, baby. <laughs> when I'm in Japan, I think I'm Justin Bieber. I'm from Justin Nigeria, Bieber. Though. People want to take your money. <laughs> in Nigeria, money is the autograph. It's Big one, bed, Alpha. Baba Alpha. Ah. In Nigeria, money is the autograph. Yep. You know, it's uh, it's an economic thing. <laughs> and we all we appreciate all the love. It just yeah. comes in different forms. Forms, fair. Yeah. And Should... you know that it's love. But oh, it's love. For yeah. me, it's love. Because when I tell the boys, oh, I don't have today, they are still cool. Like, oh, Baba, we believe. You know, but some of my artist friends, they don't have the same experience. That's why they all go around with Mopo and all of that. <laughs> because some of these people can be annoying too sometimes. But they are your people. They are the ones fueling the, putting fuel yep. in the fire. Right. Yep. You know, it's not about you giving them money. It's Showing about you love. respecting them. Mm. You know, because I say, I mean, I don't guess, I don't even have bodyguard when I'm going around. Uh, do you know how many Arab boys around me? Oh, my God, so, my God, so, my God, 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 but who in you see, Tibet, brother, you know, it's all <laughs> love, man. Dollar. Yeah, man. People that don't attack politicians that destroy their life. Okay, what do they really, is if you are, now those not behavior. Well, look, gar- gar- you know? <laughs> That's why people, you know your song, you must talk about enemy. Your behavior is bad. You have enemy <laughs> everywhere. You know it's your behavior, you not be blaming the enemy. Why would I be your enemy? You are toasting my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> your Instagram live. Yeah. <clears throat> Why, why, first off, when you come on your Instagram live, every time I see you come on Instagram live, I know that you want to talk about something serious. Why do you feel that you're, that's the way that you want to speak to people when you have something very serious to say? I, I think that was... And that. do you sometimes get scared when you come on Instagram live to say anything? Are you, do you, are you worried? No, I'm not worried. Hmm. I'm not worried. No. But do I get scared? Yes. Fear is something that I don't know why people say they don't get scared. That's the lie. You get scared, but do it anyway. Hmm. Be scared, but do it anyway. You know? Do it anyway, I mean. And for people, like for you and your family, you as a person, you are someone who speaks about the issues happening in Nigeria. Like something is happening. Like the other day you spoke about going to the UK and trying Amor. to open a bank. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go there. there. Ah, I'm going to go coming. there. <laughs> but you constantly like speak about issues that happen in Nigeria. And to be honest, aside from the fact that you, of course you come from a legendary family, your father was, you know, Felakuti and he used to say all those things. You don't have to because those things don't necessarily affect you as much as every other person, come right? On, as Jeff. Yeah. But you still do it. Now, people say things like, ah, Nigerians are not the kind of people you should fight for because when something happens to you, they will dala, dakpa, lele you. Some <laughs> they will dele you. So. They will dele you. Dele dele you. Dele dele you. Dele yeah. Some people say, ah, so good and they will be much. like, your own is too much. Your own is too much. And, and, and sometimes, like, like, they, always, they, always, they always talk about Nigeria. And even when you have run-ins with the police, you see people say things like, well, why? When he's always talking too much. So do you sometimes get bothered? Like, you know what? Maybe I should not even talk. I want to more jaffo. They don't even care and they don't even support Wait, at this me. point, Leave our language <laughs> out of your mouth. That's what I tell you. At this point, we are insisting. <laughs> speak your own. <laughs> <laughs> but she is my language. She's <laughs> what do you mean now? I can't criticize you because <laughs> you're like my daughter. <laughs> hey, so to when she speaks Yoruba, I ban her. I'm from I'm from Odogolu. But she's too young. Now. Don't let anybody in the family hear you. She's too like young. It's a I'm bad, bad image of me. I don't let my daughter speak your in public. No, but my... If she does, everybody say, a hey, Pan-Africanist daughter. A <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, Pan-Africanist daughter. <laughs> What's that, <zero? laughs> She just got a ba and pa like two weeks ago. Yeah. Only yeah. two weeks ago it was ba and pa. Do you speak your in the house, though? I do. Now I'm even doing it more. Yeah, because yeah, that girl yeah, won't yeah. disgrace me. I think she will not rest until she disgrace. <laughs> so me gone, I will not rest <laughs> until I disgrace you. <laughs> <laughs> Is he how the white man? 
No, it's her. It's her personality. It's personally her. Get your stop on. My friends are not speaking it. Shall we run for a lunge? Do you have a job? How do you have opinions without a job? Oh my god! Job and opinions should be exclusive for people with jobs. Talk about Nisha or what? Lock up on your opinion. We don't want to know. You know. <laughs> this is going to be a meme. <laughs> <laughs> what you just said, it's going to be a meme. But that being said, yeah. that being said, <clears throat> I feel like. Shut up, Waki swinging. No, 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 never. Okay. Sometimes, <clears throat> like, even when my father was alive, he didn't have the respect yep. that he has today. Yep. There's something about standing on the side of righteousness as regards to African people mm. that means <coughs> that means that you'll be disregarded by the institutions of influence. Mm. So the religious institutions, the educational institutions, the uh, media, which is the other arm of this, would never project you as an example for society to follow because then that means society breaks down for them. Imagine Nigeria having a million people that think like me mm. or want to be like me. You know what I mean? Those are a million people you cannot... Society is stressing. They cannot... Control. That's a million people you cannot give your bullshit to. That you cannot sell your crap to. And yeah. they are also having that decision. Exactly. You know, so they don't want that. They want young people to, you know, continue to be infantilized. And that's why I started doing Bed's Eye View because I realized that one of the biggest weapons that our elites and their masters have on all African people all over the world, not just us here on the continent, but our cousins in America, in Europe, in South America, is that they infantilize us. They make sure that we continue to have the same ambitions when we are teenagers <coughs> as we do as men. Mm -hmm. So if you meet a Nigerian man when he was 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, tell you what do you want to do in the future what do you want what's your dream well, i want to have a house i want to buy cars i want to build the house i want to have wife i want to have my kids i want to go on holiday you know i want to buy clothes and bling if you meet the same guy when he's 40 and you ask him oh i want more cars i want mm -hmm. more bling i want more of this i want to open a company i add that one now but which is just him saying i want a job when he was young he didn't have a job but now he has a job he's so successful he can start his own business so it's still in the same, we are not allowed to, to mentally develop as men that want to create a world. Oh. You understand? <clears throat> we have to be made to feel comfortable living in other people's world. Oh. This is a European world. We live in oh. a Western existence, Western civilization, as they say. That's why you hear Nigerian people without thinking, will say, oh, where they are civilized. I say, like, we're like America. Mm. If you go where that, you mean people that go into school, schools and shoot, and shoot yes. kindergarten children, people that are about to vote a president and almost scatter their country. I don't even care about that one. I say you go into school, kindergarten children, open gun. Okay, so if this had happened one time, that one Christmas mm. did it one time. Okay, I understand. No. This is a At constant least a case. Cases course. in a year. This year alone, no, for children, yes. In this year alone, there's been over 250 mass shootings in America. That's <laughs> insane. Hmm. But yet people tell you that this is a civilized country. World. You understand? There's a reason they do that. So we as Africans must continue to feel infantilized so that it is easy for the best things about us to be lent to the West. Brain drain. And resource as well. That's why I never complain when they say jackpot. They don't jackpot to me. What we are saying is what we do, what we think we are doing that is jackpot, we don't understand that it's a spiritual call of our resources. Our resources are going there. There's a spiritual attachment mm. between the people and that which is theirs. That's why it's not good to steal. Mm. There's a spiritual attachment to people and that which is theirs. I wish a lot of people knew this. So when you take something that is for somebody and then you're complaining that everybody from that place is coming to your country, you are joking. Mm. Nothing can stop them. Yeah. They'll come by sea, they'll come by air, because they'll come by road. Mm -hmm. The connection is deep. Spiritually, yeah, That's what is drawing back. them there, and you will not be able to stop it. Hmm. Just the way when you take from a people, you can never be greater than them. 
Because said, no matter what they take from us, they are still trying to be us. Okay. Jealous, envious, you know. So that's the spirituality of that's the spiritual side of this uh, situation that we find ourselves in. So for me, it is imperative that we as a people, when we lack the how do I put it? Where we go? No, 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 no. The love of our when we lack the love of our elders, which are the elites of society. You can be young. But when you're in the elite of society, you become, you're an elder, you have that responsibility. Africans are the only ones that have an elite that are against them. Mm-hmm. Bars. You know, that's what, one thing we don't understand as African people that Bill Gates can be corrupt all he wants, all these people. They are all corrupt, but they are corrupt for their country. They service their nation. They are corrupt for their country. Whatever corruption they're engaging, whatever mass murder, genocide, whatever evil atrocity, the bottom line is that that thing is Constance benefiting them. It must benefit their society. When people argue that, oh, Carnegie, Rockefeller, mm-hmm. Vanderbilt, yes. all these people built America, Russia. which will allow our own rich people to build Nigeria. I tell them that why those people could build America is that all their money was in America. Yep. Your money is not here, nigga. You telling me you are Carnegie and your money is in Citibank? Chopinolo <laughs> <laughs> <Where> Makbae. <laughs> You see how that curse works right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if I say, you are unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not strong enough. <laughs> if, if the that, best you can say that is, that's unfair. It's, it's, it's not mindful. Hey. It's not the meal. Africa, Shokbono, Luma. Luma, men. Olati, Biwasile. Ailala. Do you believe in Ailala? Uh, I believe in everything that is African. Do you, <clears throat> how do you identify? Religiously. As what? I mean, <laughs> say, I, say, I identify as the president of Nigeria. <laughs> do you identify spiritually? Spiritually, I'm an African completely. I have an African spiritual worldview. That's why all my enemies in Nigeria. <laughs> Just anybody that we've had public problems. We don't need to do that you win. Just look at their life. What's your religion? Africa, there's no religion. I'm an African spiritualist. <laughs> what, 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 what's your, like, I don't know, what Ogun do you believe in? All. Shongo. The, all that is necessary. <laughs> as is necessary for that situation. <laughs> but but that I'm an Ifa priest. Do you have, like, a, a shrine? I don't have, I used to have growing up. Until I was about 27, I used to have one that I was, no, let me know, 27. My mother died when I was 20, 24. So my mother was the one that was really making sure I was practicing. So till I was about 24, I had my shrine in my house. Hmm. But since then, I'm not really... But again, I'm building a new house with my family that we're going to move into. That was the house I was building for my mom that I had in. But in this my new house again now, I'm thinking of rebuilding my shrine into it. Again, so I can divinate and be babalawe again and practice. I miss those days also, <laughs> you know. But that being said, even though I'm not practicing daily, <laughs> I'm doing my rituals constantly. If you do any how you say it. I'm doing the things that are necessary for me to do. You know. <laughs> can you do fear? You do fear? Sorrow now. <laughs> Sorry, can I ask you? Come you can ask anything. Sorrow's okay. Can I ask Sorrow's you anything? Okay. Anything. What do you mean by ritual? Ah. Ritual, like when bodies quietly still go to church and they take wine and eat. Communion. That's the body of Christ. And it's a ritual. Something you do. The it same is. way constantly at certain times. Okay, so it's in the body of Christ is ritual for presenting. What's yeah. your ritual? Re- different ones. Sometimes the, the ancestors need blood of chicken mixed with some <laughs> red oil, some cola nuts. You know, these different rituals. They are diff- Sometimes you need to um bow, go, I mean, you need to worship your you need to worship your issue. Things necessary. Sometimes you need to give to your ancestors, those that have come before you that are calling that, oh, there's a blessing. Don't like that. That they have, that they've given mm-hmm. you. I need to. You will know that. Ah, ah. And you like me? What? <laughs> yeah, they say yes. It's us. Spiritual danger. <laughs> Submit some of it. This is after the fact, not before the fact. That if you know you are looking for ten million, come and give. <laughs> no, after the fact. So you believe in like rituals? You believe in ebo? All those things? Ah. Oh, the amount of ebo I've carried in my life. <laughs> Listen, 
there's nothing about African religion that is that should push African people away. It is the demonization of it, you know. Media has power. And when you watch a hundred movies a day, you know, and that's why we don't trust ourselves in Nigeria also, that we cannot build, there's no solidarity. It's also due to this propaganda of, because to attack African spirituality, you must attack African people. Nobody can push African spirituality with African people. So, to destroy and demonize <coughs> African as religion. As Yeah. Not only as inferior, but as demonic. Demonic. That is what is wrong with it. I don't mind. You. They say we are inferior to so are we not thriving? Fair enough. Not as we should, but you know, look at us, man. You know. What is wrong here is in this demonization, you have to tell stories that build distrust among Africans. So in most of these movies, that's why you find that in every movie, it's not the government that is spoiling your life. It's not the government that is making things hard and rich politicians. It's not these big corporations that are exploiting us in all these movies that are making your life hard. No. It's your father that wants to kill you. Your mother wants to kill your you. Uncle. Your sister wants to kill you. Your uncle wants to kill you. Your brother wants to kill you. Your cousin wants to kill you. Your boyfriend wants to kill you. Your driver wants to kill you. Everybody around you wants <laughs> to kill, kill you. Everybody Just moving through the paranoia. Apart from everybody. the government. Every, except bro. Everybody wants to kill you. Bro. Everybody wants to kill you. Except Everybody's your actually enemy. killing you. Yeah. You understand? I don't think I've watched a Nigerian film before that I saw a police kill somebody in the film. <laughs> <laughs> Me, uh... really? <laughs> Me, really? But just go to the village one time in that film. <laughs> Bro. Somebody will never chop belly. But it's not like those. So things Nigerians are not don't real. trust. We don't trust ourselves. It's not like those things are not real, though. Yes, but it's real everywhere in the world. I hear that. Not that true. It's not and it's not through African spirituality. I hear that. That anybody can harm anybody. anybody. Yes. True. Let me tell you, the gods are not anybody's bodyguard or assassin. They are not your messenger. You can't send Shango message. Say this guy divest me. Go and kill her. Are you mad? In Shongo, your mate. <laughs> if you're not careful, why delivering that message? <laughs> oh, my God. In every field, just the way in Christianity and Islam, I'm yeah. not saying all their priests are fake, but you see a lot of fallacy. Yeah. 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 So a lot of people run into this fake priest that say, oh, you hate you, your best friend, go and put this one for you, drink it. Yeah. If they give you poison, it's not my poison that anybody can get anywhere. It has nothing to do with spirituality. You know, you put poison, so you just poison the person and you kill the person or you make the person sick. You know, this. Poison that you can get anywhere. It has nothing to do with spiritual power. Hmm. <laughs> you understand? But it's portrayed as spiritual power. power. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, do you believe in God? Not in the concept that the Western and Abrahamic religions portray God, their own Western white God. Because this God, this is their own God. If he, if he was living with us, nobody would like him. What do you mean? I say nobody will like him. Somebody watching you every time. Telling you what to do every time. 5,000 years, no election on the throne. Just spend 15 years on earth on the throne. Here your people start complaining. Oh God, when is the next election? When is the... We don't like autocrats. He doesn't like women. Every bad thing happening in the Bible is because of a woman. <coughs> Eve, Delilah, Jezebel. I can go on and on. Women are the ones that bring down every problem. Sir, Sir Solomon is the woman that came to trust. People David. are hated. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, mm. women, you cannot see. A woman's place is in the kitchen. Let him laugh. First, this man. is a Christian proverb. Do you agree? <gasps> it's not in the Bible, though. I won't say, say a Christian proverb. It I is think a Christian proverb. But because How is it, it comes out from Christian culture. How? In the Bible, we had women who were leaders. Which one did God appoint? Like well. Saul. Deborah. Somebody said Deborah. I don't God really appointed read, her. I don't really read my Bible. But... Leader of where? I know yet. Speak up. I think we are live. <laughs> yes. No, you can come and say. Well, there's also a, there's always an exception that makes the rule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we also had Queen Esther. Eh, no, this like, eh, eh, wait. Queen Esther was not appointed. Wait. She was not appointed by God, but. No, eh, let me wait. This, this story is also, is, is, also is, uh, Jewish history. Yes. So don't conflate the history for the spiritual. I'm saying yeah. the spiritual aspect. Okay. The kings that had contact with God, that, I mean, God even came down to wrestle with Saul. 
I mean with David all night. J- Jacob. Jacob. J- Jacob. Is it Jacob? Yeah, yeah. Jacob. Well, I've not and read it. It wasn't God, it was an angel. Ah, uh-uh. somebody from heaven. <laughs> angel. It was angel. an angel. Which angel? Uh-uh. He's not an angel. Uh-uh. I say he's not an, an angel. angel. It was an angel. It he wasn't was. an yeah, angel. Was an angel. David said he had not seen ah, Baba Kino Shele gone go. <laughs> I've been serving you since I've not seen you. He said, okay, I'll come out. Ah, Let's one, check. One wrestle all night. Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, whatever, but one shot in the wrestling bout. It was it was an angel, it wasn't God. So God came to uh, Moses. Okay, so the Bible says Jacob wrestled with God. <laughs> Genesis 32. Oh, yes, no. this is your Deborah story too is a lie. <laughs> and now I'm doubting your Deborah story. Now I'm doubting the Deborah story. Please let's check with that Deborah story. Did God appoint Deborah? Let's check. Did God anoint her? Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. I don't um, believe this. Show. Obviously. So Jacob, this is um Genesis 32. Verse 20 says, so, so Jacob called the, the place Penel, saying, um, don't worry, It's because sister, I, I saw story. God. So my grandfather was a reverend. And yet my life was spared. So even my grandfather was a reverend. Um, sorry, I'm just How many people here? Check. Is your grandfather a reverend? No. Is your grandfather a reverend? No. Is your grandfather a reverend? No, no. Okay, now let me reverse. Is your great grandfather a canon? No. Is your great grandfather a canon? If I priest. Why are you arguing with a son of a grandson of a reverend? So it says your name will no longer be Jacob or Israel because you have wrestled with, you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Oh, so you mean is Islam God said for grandfather? Right? No, that's not what they said. They say you overcome. That's not what he said. He overcome. Overcome is the victory. fact that he was able to and see the interpretation of this is also not that. You are still afraid of this book. No, <laughs> ah, God, <laughs> it's a holy book. Oh God, the interpretation of it is not is also not. It's not, yes, it's like it's being paraphrased, fight. right? Yeah. It's allegory. The one you people like is allegory. People don't like is allegory. The one you like is is literal. Is, is literal. Anyways, Continue. <laughs> Shem, what was it like? I, I'm trying to take us away from it. Don't. No, no. I, I, I okay. just I just wanted to par- paraphrase this. Okay. I personally, personally, as a person, I don't feel like God is in one form. Is it what? Is in one form. Like I feel like there are, there's a reason why everybody has Bro. a representation of God or a Godhead. If your God doesn't look like you, it's not your God. That's Christus. That's I mean, if you are closing your eyes and you're imagining your God is some white man with white hair, white beard, with white robe, you are lost. Genesis mm. seven. Yeah, chapter yeah. seven to fourteen has already made it clear that African people will never enter heaven. <laughs> Why? Uh, Only 12,000 people <clears throat> from the 12 tribes of Judea will enter heaven. Many 144,000 finish that will enter the real heaven. The rest of you will go there to serve in the temple. So slavery has already been secured for you but, again. But that was the Old Testament. It's the New well, Testament. Genesis is New Testament. Old Testament. Genesis is New Testament. It's Old Testament. Genesis. It's I'm Old sorry. Testament. Revelation 7 verse... Oh, uh, sorry. Speaking, 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 My grandfather, Israel. I'm sorry, Israel. <laughs> My grandfather's name too is like Jacob. His name is Israel. Shemu, Israel Oludotun Ransom Kuti. You don't have the clout that I have in, in the Christian world. <laughs> In Christendom. Shem, in Christendom, <laughs> my brother. Shem, tell us how. <laughs> Shem, my oh, grandfather oh. is one of the first. Do you know his grandfather? Reverend Israel Oludotun Ransom Kuti. I O. Go to all the Anglican churches. Many of the songs they sing there, we compose it too. Just the way <laughs> we, we influence them in the <laughs> outside world music, inside the church. Is our music to their singing? <laughs> Best of both worlds. I'm telling you, Ishe Oluwa. Yeah, actually, that's it. That's Gole Bajeo. That's my great grandfather. Yeah. My grandfather too. Numerous. So, my great grandfather was the first artist to be recorded in West Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you say musician, I'm telling people that you know nothing comes from nothing. From nothing. From nothing. Exactly. But speaking about Best of Both Worlds, I think you did really good on Fireboy's album. Thank you. Software. How did you? You are link? the first girl giving me compliments on this song. Really? I've been playing the song. <laughs> okay, no, no, it's my friend. No girl has said it with me. Okay. So did you play for your wife though? 
Yeah, you know, my wife was there when we made it. Not, not there when, when I made it. When I got home the next day, I paid it for her. She did, had edited. Didn't she applaud you? Uh, you know... So I'm not the first girl. We have been she... together. Me and my wife, we've been together for like 20 years. So it doesn't count. So, you know, she has to say what everything I do is okay. <laughs> I'm the one paying her bills, basically. I also heard that, she, you know, during your interview, you spoke about the large monthly Very salary. Large. Very large. <laughs> Yet Yeti complaints is not enough. <laughs> Fear woman. I know they feel I'm saying Fear woman. She's, it's not, she complains. But how do you feel about that? Ah, it's too much. <laughs> but you they feel up. Ah. But you know, the household has to be taken care of. Yeah. I mean, look at this cane, you know? A lot of nutritional... Uh, uh, food of nutritional value. High nutritional value. Goes into you it. You know, goes into it. This is not the cream. I need rub cream. It's just the nutrients on the inside. <laughs> making the outside glow. Glow. How do you look up? the meal. Very mindful, cutesy. very cutesy. <laughs> I beg, I beg. How did you link up with Fireboy? He called me, he called me up uh, and told me he wanted to come and see me. I told him he wanted to come and give me money. You know, so I quickly sent my address. But when he came, he had work, not money. You know, but for me, that was nice. Like, he didn't want to say it over the phone. And, you know, once I about Damolai, that he's really, really respectful and truly, you know, that's one thing about true talent, right? Every artist that I've met that are snobs is because they're not, they're not talented. Mm. So they are hiding their mm. um, Deficiency. deficiencies Deficiency. and insecurities Deficiency. behind arrogance. Mm. So when you meet any artist that is arrogant, and it's because there's really no, he, he knows that you see anything. If you near and where we're going to say, ah, Baba empty. So he doesn't want that. Yeah, it's true, you know. Uh, so one of the traits of really talented artists, famous or not really famous, is that they are open. They are open. People can always be around them and they are lively and they are welcoming to people. They are respectful, joyful around them. There's no like this thing you see of uh, everybody and it's their ego. Mm. Artists buying down to other artists. Say you sign an artist. Okay, it's fine, you've signed the artist. So you, that means you have agreed that he's your colleague, that he's worthy of being an artist, but still he's your boy. I mean, you say, yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, you, you sit down there, they have to sit down there, all these things that they do, you know, so. But he wasn't like that. His crew was with him, was the same guy. And so in that way, you know, he, man's, man's really talented. You know, so yeah, I mean, I did my thing, you know, and <coughs> I've been doing for as long as I've been doing it. I, and I actually took it because he said there was going to be a video with plenty of fine girls. Immediately I heard that. Fireboy, please keep to, keep to your promise, please. I, I picked my socks up immediately. <laughs> and then, quick! Immediately, I was blown. <laughs> Speaking of another link up, how did you link up with Junior Gong himself, Damien? Oh, uh, I met, I've met Damien since 2009, after my first record. We played a show together in Euro Cairns in Caen, in France. Yeah. That's when we met. Long time. But the relationship has always, has always been there and we're kind of cool people. Damien is really cool. But he's a very spiritual guy as well, you know, in terms of his relationship with the world, you know. He really, really takes his relationship with the world very serious, you know. So when I was thinking, like, who, who do we feature on the album? And I remember it was like Damien. And something that I said, said deep it just. That's the word. Is that his manager? So good friends with my manager. Oh, <laughs> so it was kind of easy to make it happen. We didn't even really have to like do a lot, you know. So for for something that is so historical and monumental, you think a lot of work went in the yeah, background. Back end. But nah, we just oh, yo, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Send the track. Yeah, okay, I'll send my verse next week. Oh yeah, it's dope. I like it. Okay, fine. This is I'm gonna use the verse. I'm gonna okay. That's it. Yeah, you know, but, but that's what happens also when talent meets talent. Like, there's no ego there. Mm. You know, there's nothing we're trying to protect. There's no insecurity because your ego is protecting your insecurities. That's what it does. Mm. You know, that's all ego does, right? So, there was that's no ego bad. there. It was two of us, true talents, willing to open up, be vulnerable, share. You know, so yeah. What about Janelle Monet? Is it because she's a fine babe? No, Janelle Monet is because we have a lot of mutual friends. Okay. And I met her in 2014. We played together at the Hollywood Bowl. It was the same day I met one of my favorite artists, Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. You know. 
You're not going to ask what we talked about. No, yeah. No, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I was hoping one of them would. Uh, yeah. I, 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 so I was just standing and he, and he was walking. And this is why I also think he's not really blind. People have been saying that. A lot of people have been saying that. Not that he saw me. You know, he was walking and he said, Yo, what's up, Stevie? I said, I'm doing good, brother. How did you know I was a brother? Voice. The bass. The bass. The bass? Yeah. You mean we just before you just know this guy is black? Yes, no. No, he's saying before Brother. he spoke. He oh. No, I spoke. No, I spoke no, first. Yeah. Of course. Uh-uh. So you mean with my voice, you just uh-uh. know. And I used uh-uh. Cornell. I used my best British accent that time. I just, 2014, I was still like fresh from like I was still doing. IGGB. You know, like what's, you know? What are you talking about? <laughs> anyway. You have a scarf accent. <laughs> he knew I was black. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, but yeah, anyway, that's my conversation. You know, I said, what's up? And he answered, full-blown conversation. That's the full-blown. Ah, what's the you conversation? Wonder. I talk, you answer. Is that not the conversation? That's TV. See, you yeah, he said, I thought he talked about so many other things. That's your assumption. Well, actually, it's, <laughs> it's All I said was that we had blown. a conversation. Yeah, a full-blown. I spoke and he answered. Simple. I'll take it. Ah. Uh-uh. I'll take it. Have I, you I, spoken to Simona before? I don't... I, Have you said anything to him? I've never even met him. Exactly. He, has not, he hasn't seen me. Exactly. But yeah. A, <laughs> hater. I'm, I'm try a, to, try I'm, to I'm diminish hater. my achievement. I'm, 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 <laughs> you might have seen a lot of things. <laughs> but, Shewa, so, I want to ask you. I opened for others anyway. And I also met yeah. Andrew Tristak. So we had that relationship since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jidena, yeah. Kwabina, I know all the, all the crew. So when she was making this album, she said she some. Kwamena called me actually and I said, Janelle yeah. wanted me to do something on the record. And, and that girl dropped back. She dropped bands on me. Oh, Janelle. Dropped what? If I wasn't married, I'll come and be one of those guys. You're using, like, you know, she has this whole, like, yeah. mm-hmm. I would be this thing. The bands <laughs> she dropped on me. What's ba- bands? Bands. Bands. You're yeah. two, two million. Okay. Bands. This Money now. Yes. Okay, oh, okay, okay. That girl Ooh. dropped. So, it's, so you'll do it again? I was, I almost fell in love. <laughs> if not, if not. I don't know why women fell in love with men that give them money. <laughs> what time? I'll take it. I any man that blames any woman again. i take it. For that behavior. How did it make you feel inside? To I be said I money? was in, I was almost in love. If she had, if she had discussed anything other than the music. I'll have spoken to my wife. Like, Wait, wow. Dear, Be wow. Wow. we'll be together for a while. We'll be together for a while. How about we will shuffle? I need a break. <laughs> but Janelle did not take it there. Oh my oh. God. But I was, all I'm saying is that I was prepared. Oh, I was you ready. ready. With the, as soon as she paid me that money, I'm like, what? <laughs> to blow sass. To, to blow, blow sass. Oh, look what toy. You dusted your saxophone. I said I reevaluated you my intimate it. relationship with my wife. You are talking about saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, I was saying, I think this is not, I think this is not for the sax alone. <laughs> she must want something. She must want something. I don't understand that conversation. <laughs> Could it just be for the work? There must be more. When there must, there to must myself, be more. I was talking to myself. <laughs> This cannot be <laughs> It reminds me of a tweet of a tweet that a girl made about, oh about, about 12 years ago. She said, There's a way a guy will take you out on a date and spend all the money on you. At the end of the night, you'll be like, Oh boy, Alpha, next deal. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> I don't blame any woman again. Totally, I know. Okay. I don't well, blame. She said that. She takes it. There's a level that you receive, you have to give. <laughs> you have to give. There's a level of receiving that, will, in, that inspires giving. He will receive. Ah, but, maka yo boye. <laughs> is, speaking, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it is the language and the tongues for me? My, my one is that I will, um, since that day, I have never, I understand completely how a man can make a woman fall in love by That's giving her money. money. I Please, understand. She cannot. Oh. Do you, you spoke about your daughter and, you know, obviously from the way you spoke about your daughter, um, do, do you guys have like you're a cool dad? Do you think you're a cool dad? I'm the coolest parent, Sha. You're the coolest parent. I'm sure uh, she likes as long as she likes more than my wife. Yeah, cool. It's fine. How so? There's a <coughs> conversation that um, Johnson I was talking about was having a conversation. Oh my god! And he was talking about how he doesn't he doesn't think you'll ever have the capacity to be a good parent. 
mm-hmm. and like not wanting to have a kid and why because of that because of that and he doesn't think he's he has the emotional range or like just the capacity to be a good parent great guy honest and that's why he's like i don't i don't think i want to do this you know but how oh, finish. how did you know that you were ready to be a good dad and do you think you're a good dad you think you're a good parent i don't think there's not anything like a good dad or a bad maybe a mm? bad dad mm. good dad but i don't like using those yeah good. good or bad the thing is this i want my daughter to be prepared for this world mm. That's my duty. She didn't ask to be brought here. Yeah. It's my shenanigans <laughs> that brought her. You know, so it's your duty to make sure she understands how the world works and is prepared for it to the best of your ability. You know, so people that fail in that responsibility, I guess maybe that those are fall in the category of bad. But it also, it's a caveat. As long as she likes me more than my wife. <coughs> So when people say that you, you, you shouldn't have a kid if you don't have the money to raise a kid, do you support no, that? No, 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 not at all. Don't believe in that. And also, you know, this is what I'm saying. So John Cena, what is his qualifications to discuss and advise on? He's giving his opinion, what he feels. What he wants to do. Yeah. What we have in the world is a world where the media has told a lot of young people that uh, the world of celebrity or the world of the rich, like when somebody has money, that they know what they're talking about. About yeah. But trust me, I'm a musician, I'm in the entertainment industry, I'm in the talent business. And I meet loads of talented people every day. Talent and intelligence hmm. are far from each other. Hmm. Hmm. Like VI and Mowi. <laughs> I repeat, talent and intelligence are so far from each other. But because talented people are mostly successful people. Everybody yeah. thinks anytime they talk, especially Kanye West, that oh. they know what they're talking about. That's my that's my that's I'll, take that. that's I'll take that. You know, shout out Samson. I'll take that. You know, shout out Samson. I'll take that. I'll take that one. <clears throat> that the person is talented, that the person is talented doesn't mean the person is intelligent. We, as long as you know that, you'll be fine. You'll be I fine. hear that. Yeah. So musicians are humans too. Actors, they're not athletes, they're all humans too. So their personal experiences in life have shaped who they have become. But we live in a world where a lot of artists <coughs> and entertainers also, because of the clout and the prestige it gives them, want to come out and claim to know about human relationships. They can tell you about what well, to treat your guests. Insights. Right? They can give you insight exactly on how to run a business. Insight. It's true, inside. You know, but this, they didn't go to school for that. They don't know anything about that. They, many of the things that they've done in their life has failed. You know, many of the things that they are doing that have succeeded is because other people that know about it are the ones doing it. Hmm. You know, so it is, it is very harmful hmm. when African people are made to only listen to celebrities as a way of gaining knowledge. It's wrong. And it's only done to us. Right? We're the only people that... We have political issue, musician. We have social issue, musician. athlete. Yeah. Economic issue, musician. Social issue, uh, no, no, uh, 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 political issue, actor. Mm. Um, an actor will come out. Yeah. Where are and our then pro- we shame them for not. Where talking. are our professors? Mm-hmm. You think are professors in this field? Hmm. But they're not rich enough to be listening to. So. One and. Also, they're not giving the platform and visibility. Mm. They're not giving the mm. validation by the media, the institutions of influence. The pastors, the imams are not espousing these people mm. for their intellectual capacity so that young people know that, oh, when I want to think about real this is where we should go and think. The only examples they give of society are these people. That all they have is opinion because they never really studied these fields they want to start advising people about. And then they goof, and then and blame them. Exactly. Yeah. And even when they goof, we too, we goof by listening to them in the first place. Yeah. Fair enough. And also, we, we must detach ourselves from that thinking completely. You know, if you want to know something, go to somebody that knows what he's talking about. You know, that somebody is successful, is rich, or is famous, doesn't mean he knows what he's talking about. Even me. Even anybody. <clears throat> You know, it's important that we know that. 
it's not us black people all over the world for a reason you know but we must also now begin to see that game and move away from it you know so aside from your dad and your mom who's the greatest influence this is a two-headed question okay on your life as an artist or as a musician and then on your life as a human being both sides my dad i was in aside from aside from music okay aside from my dad and my mom oh wow wow okay diallo kenyara is my political mentor uh kunli adidiji who is my life mentor uh, but i think i'm one mentoring him in life now because <laughs> <laughs> he's an like, yeah, he's refusing to grow up i'm yabbing him all the time uh, but that, yeah he, he mentored me growing up throughout my teenage years my brother femi marimba ani uh chiwenzu uh a few people in the world that really inspire me and i look up to to be you know uh, dr amos wilson he's late now so i don't know if you're talking about people that are alive or dead but dr amos wilson <coughs> you know his books on on the black male on african spirituality on african psychology for me has been a great um influence in how i've been able to develop and grow up as a as a human being Franz fanon as well in terms of psychology you know so yeah what was the first person to put money in your pocket my dad <laughs> no aside from that oh aside from my dad <clears throat> ah it was my one of my dad it was my okay my dad used to have a lady who, a lot of people give you that money being fell out but the first time i remember because he gave me a hundred naira you know and i thought i was the richest man in the world <laughs> i never had a hundred naira and I was thinking, you know, this was 1980 something. Yeah. And when I have one now, I'm going to buy a house. <laughs> buy a car. Listen, in 1986, 87, 100 naira. It was a lot of fucking money. It's like $10,000 today. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, no, maybe no, 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 not $1,000. No. Like no, $1, no. no. It's definitely a thousand. like $1,000. In terms of value. Yeah. The 100 naira was like $1,000 when I was growing up. Facts. All day. <laughs> so, the man name was Kevin Tin and he was dating my dad's medium so my dad had a medium there was a lady that lived with us so when my dad wanted to contact the spirit world she was the one that he yeah. used and then she was possessed and mm. passing the message uh, Wait, uh, it's true she, uh, so her name was sewa so yeah she had a girlfriend whatever. called he had a, she had a boyfriend called kesington and when he came i don't know that's me 100 naira <laughs> <Okay. laughs> i had to give it to my mom i said tomorrow we we'll buy a car I want to buy you a car. I don't buy... <laughs> you get one, you get one. You get a car. You get a car. Everybody, everybody gets a car. <laughs> oh yeah, so God. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's the first person I remember, like, give me money. Yeah. So, um, I just want to take a bit. People have been talking about this for a while. This show is still brought to you by Shivers Rigo. I'm about to give you two bottles of Shivers. Shivers XV. Ah, you're giving me free alcohol. Well, give it to the listeners. This listeners. is the best podcast in Nigeria. Slide it out. <laughs> Don't slide it out. Put it in. Which is our social media. Actually, exactly. Actually, let me say it again. Give me a bottle. One, only one. You said two. No, 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 no. That's for. Tell him you are giving him two so he can say it. Oh, jeez. This is the best podcast. Yeah, like to learn me. Don't you just wait? The first one. Like. Sorry now, we have the first one. <laughs> Juho, <laughs> slam it across board. <laughs> I got more channels. So wait, so I, Melody, I, I, please let me just say. Yeah, okay, yes, please. So um, the listeners of this pod, shout out to you guys. Um, we're about to do like a giveaway of like two bottles to you guys. Mm-hmm. What was the first song that Shion could ever recorded? Ah, I don't see the guess. answer. I have a wild guess. Don't it might not be, but it's very close. I don't, know the answer, you it's know. It's someone online, I'm sure. Um, but you get this. The first two people that get it right, you get two bottles of Shivas X. You get hey, one bottle of Shivas X B each. After this, I'll give you the answer. You call <laughs> with a different name. <laughs> no, no. No, now you're going to say that. Well, we can can I mention? I no. I so, so, Tolani, I think, how, I think how we should do this is the first is there a way so okay so send it to the email zero conditions and the first comment on our youtube page 
Because mm. people with are... With the response. With the response, of course. The first comment with the actual correct answer. And this is just to say shout out to our YouTube listeners. We, got, up, we recently now. crossed 10K subscribers. We are so grateful. <laughs> Um, give me, just give me my money. <laughs> just give me my money. <laughs> you know, we are actually so grateful for all the love that you guys have shown Great. us since we started yeah. this podcast as a joke, just as friends. You guys have stayed true to us and we really appreciate it. And I read every comment on every of the videos. Every that week, I don't know. Every day, I do it. I count everything. I respond to what I can respond to. We really appreciate you because we're just regular people that you guys really love and She's listen to. And no, we don't. Oh, I love it. We don't. We don't take it for granted. I don't know what you are talking about, but love thank it. you guys. Thank you guys for all the love. You are gossiping. You know you made out to gossip. Thank you guys for all the love. We really appreciate it. So the first comment on the YouTube page with the correct answer, guess a, guess a free bottle of Shivers and XV. But yes. Yes, you get a shivers. You, you get, get a shivers. shivers. You get a shivers. Get Everybody get a shivers. And that's on period. Um, uh, go and collect for a show. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, boys, we'll beat you. Um, the other question that I had, since we are talking about like Nigerian followers and everything. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen the news about Sine. What's up with your Sine? You haven't seen it. You've not seen it? No, no. I be, today has been long. Oh. It's been on for a while, though. Oh, he's transfer Saga, yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. but Saga, they change every day, so... They yeah, change every football day. is football. Yeah. It, it happens. Now, the com- conversation online right now is that people are saying, oh, some people are saying, Nigeria say, secure the bag and go to Saudi Arabia. Some say people are saying, stay in Europe and all of that shit. Nobody's saying come to Yimba. Nah, fuck that. They can't pay that nigga. That's what I mean. Yeah, I don't really, I, you know, I watch English football because it's the most, you know, like, okay, my dad too, like, well, he was a fan of the club. You know, my dad grew up in North London. Yeah. So. It was an Arsenal fan. Don't let me break your heart. You know, we. My uncle was Manchester. Uncle Becko. He went to school there. My dad, Trinity College, North Boy. You know, there's only one club. Fucking hell. Man. That being said, mm. <laughs> I don't like this. That being said, uh, like I believe that we as Nigerians, especially our ex-footballers that have <laughs> made it in okay. this sport these billionaires in this country with all this money they say they have we need to work on our own national league yeah and our best i mean look at brazil the yeah. best players cannot leave brazil before they're 22. Yeah. Or egypt you know so there are people get a chance to experience them experience their talent experience mm-hmm. how they play we they get a feel Kill of their them. best players so those are the best brazilian players play for brazil the investment is there the stadiums in the cameras to show the games, to bring the money, to pay the players well. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not saying other footballers would do it, but even I'm a Nigerian footballer, and there's an American club that wants to pay me 10 million for when I'm 22. But they're like, I should come now, I should come now, leave my country, but my country is paying me maybe 1 million a year. I'll stay till I'm 22, and then go and yeah. make that money. You know, so the issue that we have here is that our own uh, league cannot compete for our own best players. Many of our best players didn't even play in our leagues yeah. at all yeah. before they left the country. Yeah. They didn't even have a they didn't didn't excel. pass one board well, in Nigeria. Some of them never spent two years in this yeah. country. Yeah, you know, so it's, it, for me, Osime Saga, whether it goes to, whether we're fighting that our best footballer is going to this country or that, either the Europeans or the Arabs, you know, that's not African. With all these billions they say they have, and engage young African people in sport development. Imagine if we were doing that. Look at this last Olympic mm-hmm. Games. Yeah. Look at all this plethora of sporting events Nigeria does not even compete in. You know? Because why? Nobody will invest in a good volleyball team, in good volleyball uh, leagues. Uh, leagues here, swimming leagues. I mean, they know? have volleyball leagues. And we have these people. Look at, the, what about running running leagues? Uh, the running league, yeah. For running the 100 meters. What, people in Nikiti, Undo, that live up in the mountains. These are I naturally born Atlas. long distance runners. Of if the there was a league, yeah. cross country league, all these things that is invest, no BBM, color wrap apartment for money in Miami, that's how to be big man, you know, not to develop your country. So I don't care where Osimen plays for, whether he plays for a white man or he plays for an Arab. How does that help my country? Mm. It didn't even score in the last of uh, me. It's called one goal. No, it's called one. Sure, it's called one. Sure, what, what, what do you think about? I'm more worried about that than where he's playing, which Oibo Arab is playing for next. Is all I'm saying. 
<laughs> everybody get what they want in there. Hey, but how many of them have made the money? They are investing Come in a gambling invest. company. Now, gambling company, all of them invest. Vices. To make Vices. our young African people turn to gambling addicts. Is that what we want? Before you go, why that title for your forthcoming album? A heavier yet, lazy, because I'm, you know, because as I said, the night of this world is too elitist. So there's this saying, heavier lazy head that wears Where's the, the crown. crown. Even though that head is sleeping on silk pillows. Feathered pillow, on feathered, sleeping on silk pillow, a pillow with feathers inside and silk cover. Mm. Softest bed, eating the best food. Easy, like, but heavier yet, lays the crownless head. Because regardless of whatever you say you are going through, when we are going through our shit, it is harder. You understand? And also as a musician, you know, when you make a good album, they say it's heavy. And many of my friends, I've won the bed, by the way, Three of my friends had a bet with me that I could not top Black Times. That there was nothing I could do. Listen, That's a dope album. Listen. <laughs> From the artwork. <laughs> that would top Black Times. <laughs> and when they listened to this album, I won. So, okay, I, want I also to called it now. Heavier Yet. I want to play you know, that like, And this is volume one. Volume two is dropping next year or the year after. Because I have a project in between. My life is full of uh, yeah, adventures in front of me right now. I'm excited about that. You know, so yeah. When when I saw the when I saw the announcement for the album and the album title, of course you just explained why that the way I interpreted it was you were speaking about your experience as a kuti that sometimes maybe the world be placing expectations on you and no no no, no. it wasn't, it wasn't personal for me it was a projection like saying heavier yet leaves the crownless head the only part of me that was that is passed out to me that I saw myself as part of the people. That were experiencing this heavier existence while these rich people want you to feel sorry for them because heavy lace they hang and hang the crown. <laughs> if it's crying to everything, put it down. <laughs> Go to sleep, nigga. <laughs> Go to <laughs> sleep, nigga. <laughs> I, I want to ask you something. Why what made you become someone that likes VDM? What is that about him that you like that makes you speak for him? Because nobody else is doing what he does. As a musician, I can't do what he does because then people will say I'm a hater. Many people in our industry take advantage of people. You know, they and I for one want to pick personal, I don't like personal squabbles, especially in my industry. You know, I want to pick on national issues that will move us as a nation forward. I don't want to be having unnecessary personal because every day I get people complaining. Girls, especially that have been molested, raped, pushed around by many of these artists. Trust me, that VDM is around. It's protecting a lot of women. Although some girls say they don't like it. From the misbehavior of our artists, of our celebrities, of our famous people, of our rich people. Because in the back of their mind, trust me, I have this by evidence. Hmm. In the back of their mind, they're afraid that if I do this, they go to VDM. <coughs> we miss it. Because there's, there's this almost cultish, and I'm not saying confraternity of school. Yeah. That one is a cult, yes. But you know those kind of uh, Dravidian cults? Mm -hmm. You know, behavior, Dave Karesh cults. Yeah. Ideas. You know, all this cultish behavior that people just... Hush, hush. Hush, hush. Should be over the carpet. Everybody is on everybody else's side. Somebody can be wrong. Yeah. And you speak it to the community expecting that the community will correct that person and be like, oh, no, you can't cheat this person like this, pay him back. And instead of that, they will silence you on behalf of this person that has taken your sweat. Yeah. yeah. You know? So if those kind of people don't like VDM, I mean, so be it. Good for them. You know? He's necessary to put certain things in check in our society. And that's what it is. And... Uh, other than that, me and him, we don't have any other... Have Personal. you met him before? Oh, many before. times. When he comes to the house, he stays in my house. Ooh. Yeah. But the, the side of the conversation where people say things about the, the downside of a person <laughs> being <laughs> like, exalted yeah. to a hero as opposed to having systems that work, what about that downside? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are, we, we are, in, a, we are in Nigeria where institutions let us down all the yeah. time. So I've, I've even told him that what you are doing now, you must politicize it, inst institutionalize it, or else 
it's, like it's an ombudsman service. It's going to be mm-hmm. nothing. You you're going to fall. You know you must remove. You must detach yourself and make it its own thing and give it its own power. That people can engage with it without you. That even people that don't like you. I mean, I mean people that you don't like, sorry. Does. Like, even can people that you don't like can benefit, can benefit from this thing that you you are creating for for people, you know. And that's something he's welcome to do, and that's what actually makes him a good guy. So, just to, in one minute, please, in one minute, what was the situation with the bank in in, in the UK? <laughs> no, that's it. Then let me not be formal. He had okay. It's not a situation of banking. I mean, what I said is what, what happened. What happened? Like he went to. I wanted, to go, I wanted to go open bank account in GT Bank in London. I had a ten thousand pound check, you know, feeling like a big man, you know, like ten k, bro. <laughs> we out here, fam. <laughs> Shark County. You know. The guy just like I said, I don't. You need at least fifty thousand. Easy. <laughs> My pre go inside. Only guys who understand this thing. Oh boy. <laughs> you know that thing we could do. With <laughs> <laughs> and I've been making my, I see my friend that was 80. We went together, he drove me there. Throughout, I've been making mouth to you about how rich I am. <laughs> Cause this is my 10,000 pound check. So when they refuse, when they, when they embarrass, drive us outside, kind of, he laughed me from central London to Woolwich. <laughs> the fact that you find it so funny. <laughs> So what did you do with it? What did you do with the check? I went to open it with another bank account. <gasps> another bank that, that respected me. That's why they am out. I, w- I don't want to give the bank advance because I even left the bank. They are racist. <laughs> wow. Yes, man. You know, there's no escaping racism in any European oh, institution. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so anyway, that was what happened. I couldn't, you know, but for me, you know, this, this, the story we were discussing was that I feel, as I said, as I've been saying in all this interview, that these people that have money in this country do not have regard development of the country. Yeah. Case mm. closed. Case closed. Ladies and that gentlemen, how... please clap for Shell That's how we bring it to Just give round. me my money. Give me my money. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shell for Thanks coming for on the up. pod. We have to wrap it up today. Right now, we would really love to... It's not Rachel. No Rachel. We're supposed to do like longer. But, you know, this would, is Would happening. you come back to this pod? I'll come back. I'll come back. Are you okay. sure? Okay. So we'll have him again. Have him again. Thank you so much. Do not forget to follow us across all social media platforms at Zero Conditions Pod. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Zero Conditions Pod on YouTube. And you can also watch us live on Pop Central Channel 189. Follow Shimon Kuti. Be b- Big, Big Bird. Bird Check out his show tomorrow. At the shrine. We save his new when album. I go. Uh, heavier yet, 4th I'm of October. So fucking drunk inside that show. And that's on period. Bye bye. Period. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was brought to you by Shivas Rigo. Buy a bottle of XVO. The drink is nice. I can't lie.